Hello and welcome to this episode of the English Verbs series. Today we're going to look at the verb pay. So thinking about how this verb and its forms are written, we've got the infinitive to pay, past tense paid, past participle is the same paid, and as you can see that Y changes to an I. ING form paying, third person pays. But to really dig down and think about the pronunciation, we need to look at the script. So let's have a look at the script from the Cambridge Dictionary. So here we see that we've got that double vowel for the end of this. So we begin with the P, P and then we've got the A, double vowel, A, A. And that comes together to make pay, pay. Now, this double vowel requires movement of the shape of your mouth. So if you're not familiar with the A vowel, then check out the links below and I'll put a link there to another video that will help you to get to grips with this because the A sound is really important for all of the forms of this verb. So let's have a look at the others then. So we've got paid with that D for the past simple and past participle, paid. So we need to have a vibration in the throat there for the D, paid. Paying has that ing ending and take care to stress the first syllable. So pay is stronger than ing, paying. And then our third person, even though it's written with an S, because pay ends in a vowel, which is voiced, the S is realized as a voiced Z sound. So it's pays, pays. So I'm going to read down really quickly and I just want you to repeat what you hear nice and loud. Pay, paid, paid, paying, pays. Good. So let's put these into the context of some sentences then. So we'll start with the past tense paid. I paid my rent yesterday. So we've got that time reference yesterday and paid is in our past simple. So we know that this is a finished action and we know when it happened. With number two, they paid me back what they owed me. Now here we don't get a time reference. We don't know when the paying back happened, but because we've got that simple form, there's no, um, there's no verb have here. So we know this isn't a past participle. It's just a past simple paid. They paid me back what they owed me at some point in the past. So moving on to our past participle form then, we've got a form of the verb have, have you paid for the concert tickets yet? Have you paid for the concert tickets yet? So have you done something takes us up to now. It could be that you did the thing a long time ago in the past, but when we frame it with here, we've got present perfect. Have you done something? We're bringing it up to the present. I want to know at this point in time, has it been done? And when we use yet in this kind of sentence, it kind of gives us the flavor that we expect the answer could be yes. We're hoping that the answer is going to be yes. That's what that yet gives us a flavor of. I expect that possibly you've done this thing. With the second example then, she has paid no attention to me all week. So again, we're in this present perfect setting. It's third person, so she has paid no attention to me all week. Now paying attention is um, a different kind of paying. In example one, we're paying with money. Um, but to pay attention means to give attention to somebody. So this week she has given me no attention is effectively what's being said. ING form then, are you paying attention to what I'm saying? So again, we've got this idea of paying attention and 
I'm saying right now, are you listening? So this is a continuous action happening now, literally at the point of speaking. Are you listening to me? Are you paying attention? This one's slightly different. Who's paying for the meal? Who is paying? The paying will be happening soon. It's not happening right at this moment, we imagine. But effectively, this question, who is paying, has the same sort of meaning as who is going to pay or who will pay. That's the feeling of this sentence. But it brings it a little bit closer to now by using that is ing construction. So who's paying for the meal? Finally, then third person, she always pays her staff on time. Now here, she always pays. This is not located anywhere particular in time. This is more a description of her habit, her usual way of doing things. On time, meaning at the correct time. So her normal habit is to pay her staff when she should pay them. Number two, then, he never pays me any attention. And again, this isn't located anywhere particular in time. It's just his habit. He never does it. He never gives me any attention. He never pays me any attention, generally speaking. So just as a review, then, to finish off, we've got to pay, paid, paid, paying, pays. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and hit like and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to work through some more verbs with that focus on pronunciation, then check out the playlist. And if you want some other resources, both for pronunciation and IELTS, then check out the homepage. Thanks for watching and have a lovely day.